So we have next up a brilliant, brilliant outfit. They are right behind me, or around me, or in front of me. And I wish I could break in a song with them, but I don't understand this music. So they're going to talk to you all about a brilliant genre of music. To introduce them, we have John Papadolius on guitar. Woo! The rock concerty. We have Dave Bowers, who's laughing at me, who's also on guitar. Woo! We have uh, Mr. Drums and Percussion, James LeFager. Give it up. Woo! We also have the hardest name to pronounce today, Chad Watson on bass. Woo! I got it! Uh, but their group name is Chanson du Chat. It's the most French I've ever spoken. Take it away, boys. was Caravan, that was by Duke Ellington. Back in, uh, I want to say, like almost 1950, um, there was a guy named Django Reinhardt who came across the pond and played with Duke Ellington, a concert series in Carnegie Hall, and he hated the United States. And so he went back over to France and finished up his career there. Um, his name was Django Reinhardt, and I want to talk to you about uh, Django and who he is. He is what we... we uh, call a one-man genre. He is a French gypsy jazz guitar player that started a style of music back in the 30s that um, sometimes you have a, an artist or a musician that just comes along, lays it down, and that's it. And it's one guy. So he's responsible for this style of music that's still, it's still being played today. It's sparse, but it's really interesting stuff. And uh, so I want to talk to you a little bit about Django and how I came about it and then how we all got together, me and my friends here. So, uh, he was born in 1910 uh, in Belgium. Uh, it was a traditional Manouche Romani gypsy family. They had a caravan and traveled around. His father was pretty good at fixing violins. Um, his mother was a dancer. And they went around Europe and they did the gypsy thing. Um, there's a real weird mythology to, to uh, Django. It's, he's, he's, a, he's a weird character. He's a funny guy. Um, so the more I got into him, the, the more the music kind of had like a humorous kind of feel to me, even though it was really serious, and I was very serious about it. So, and I just loved it. And I'll tell you how I got to it. But. So his first instrument that he got was actually, um, it's like a six-string banjo. If you can imagine a banjo with, with a guitar neck on it, that type of thing. He got it when he was 12 years old, and um, he took to it immediately. And by the time he was 13, he was accompanying all the accordion players and vocalists and doing the, you know, the gypsy caravan thing. And he was a professional, and, and couldn't read or anything, but he was playing professional uh, music live with all these hot shots at the age of 13. And so you've got this kid who is uh, you know, in demand as uh, an accompanist because he could come in, sit down and play. If that wasn't your key and you weren't a vocalist, you changed the key and he, won't, and he didn't have music, he just played it. Heard it once and did it. So when you, uh, uh, when you think about that, it's kind of strange, the banjo guitar. Anyway, um, so when he was 18 years old, um, he had a tragedy. Uh, his, his wife at the time was, they, they used to make these flowers out of celluloid and paper and they would sell them to make money, you know, along with their, the musical shows and stuff like that, that all the gypsies were doing at that time. And they had all these celluloid and paper flowers in the caravan and a candle caught fire and burned Django extremely, you know, and he was in critical condition. They took him to the hospital. Um, he, they almost amputated his left leg. And so he was there for a long time. But the thing that was um, the, the most disheartening about it was he burned his hand. So 
And this can be kind of difficult to understand because as a guitar player we have four fingers and we can do all these really great things like lay all the fingers down on the guitar at the same time and play a note. But when you take half that capacity away, it has to be just destructive emotionally. So his brother, Joseph, when he was in the hospital, brought him his first guitar at the age of 18. And he relearned how to play the instrument as sort of a therapy, it's a rehabilitation thing. So I'll kind of explain this to you and then we'll go through how, this, um, how he developed the technique. And I can even give you a mini guitar lesson and you'll all walk out of here playing these songs. Um, so the first finger and the second finger, he had mobility in. The third finger was kind of frozen in the position and he could lay it down on the guitar on the fretboard and play a note, but he couldn't move it. The fourth finger was completely incapacitated. So he had two fingers. So he would play these like these little melodies just with two fingers. And he could cover the whole the whole, whole guitar uh, neck and just he can be here to here and you would go in a blink. And so he developed this weird technique, um, which kind of coined some of the phrasing and some of the voicings of the music that, you, that actually uh, continued on. So he used it not as a crutch, but he used it as, you know, he used making lemonade, basically. So now here's the weird thing about Django. He was just kind of, um, even though he's a very serious musician and everybody took him very, very seriously when they heard him play, he was kind of a space cadet and he would miss gigs, and he liked to shoot pool. So they'd be like, we gotta play this gig, where's Django? And they'd be like, one guy would run down, they'd go home, he's playing billiards. It's like, okay, come on, we gotta go, you know? So they would bring him back. He was a big uh, fisherman, he liked to fish. Sometimes he would get lost, he'd be out fishing, and they'd have to go find him, we gotta go back into town, we gotta play a gig. And uh, he liked to paint, and he would paint oil and stuff like that. He had a pet monkey, because what guitar player doesn't need a pet monkey? Um, I have cats. Uh, I don't think the cats and monkeys get along, but anyway. Um, so uh, here's the, the, the tragic thing about his career. Django passed away uh, in 1953, puts him at about 43 years old. So he, uh, he had a brain hemorrhage and uh, they couldn't get him and get him help, you know, so he passed on. The Quintet of the Hot Club of France formed in 1934, and it was Stefan Grappelli, Django's brother, and a couple other guys, and they formed this quintet, and uh, they developed this beautiful music, and they played, and the quintet went on for a long time. It was two guitars, upright bass, violin. Stefan Grappelli, if you've never heard a Stefan Grappelli recording, it's you really need to hear them. It's just the most beautiful violin music, the intonation, the vibrato. It's just these lovely melodies. So, uh, so Django and Stefan were kind of like this, you know, these crazy duo that went around playing uh, all around uh, uh, Europe. Django was illiterate. He couldn't, you know, he didn't, gypsies don't go to school. You know, they don't, it's not K through 12 for gypsies. They just kind of show up. Um, so he couldn't read, um, but he didn't need to read. Music was something that he heard and he could play. And Stefan Grappelli was a pretty smart guy. He, he was literate. So Stefan helped negotiate Django through his contracts and everything when he would have some sort of a, um, event where they would have to con have contracts. He could walk him through it, and Stefan could have him sign those. And so they had a great friendship and a great trust. Um, I want to explain how my discovery, how I got to this music, because it's not like it's on the radio, well, you know, it's not out in the open, you don't hear it a lot. Um, I was first on a college playlist that I have, and um, so I was studying guitar, and I was listening to this cassette of all these different guitar players, um, most of them were contemporary, and I heard this one track, and it, it, I was just kind of shocked, I'm like, who plays like that, you know? Um, so then I went out and started buying recordings. And I found a recording, and in the back of the recording, there was a J-sleeve, it was a, a CD, and they said, for a complete discography, contact this address. Okay, okay so I wrote, uh, wrote them in New York. And uh, I get a letter back, and it's, you know, open it up, and it's a photocopy, and he's like, uh, this has been out of print for quite a while. How did you find me? And 
this is a photocopy of what I have. I hope it helps you. And that's when I first started doing all my research and looking at uh, all, the, all the recordings that he's done. He's, he, he did a lot of music, um, and, and they're all on 78s. Um, so, I, I, so, so I started going back and finding all these different uh, recordings and just kind of collecting them and collecting them and listening to them and, and learning the tunes. Just, there weren't a lot of music book out there with these tunes in it. Some of them were standard. So I'd have to take the recording and listen to it. It's called transcribing learn from the recording, and then I would practice it. And that's how I uh, got into the style, so. Um, and then I was looking in a, a, a magazine, uh, an acoustic guitar magazine, I saw this little article. And the thing about Django, they, they always had like these, these guitars with these funny little sound holes. The other one had one that was a big D hole, and I, would, I couldn't find them anywhere. And there was this advertisement for this guy in California who was kind of a liaison between uh, a luthier. A uh, luthier is an a, a acoustic instrument builder, guitar builder, in France named Maurice Dupont. And so I got a hold of this guy and I said, how do I get one of these guitars? And he's like, well, you don't get one. He makes one for you. I'm like, how much is that? And he just told me, and I said, okay, give me about a year. Um, he goes, give me, a, give me a down payment. It's going to take him a year to make it for you. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot you half the money now and then, you know, call me up. So Maurice Dupont built me this guitar, which is an, uh, a copy of the, uh, the same guitar that Django played. And I still have that guitar at home, but, and, and I take it out once in a while, but I kind of played it through a little bit. Um, the top of the guitar is all, you know, I got the guitar, it was delivered to me in 1995, and I played on it, and I chewed a lot of the spruce away. Um, I played the frets all the way down. I had to re get the frets replaced in it. Um, I just love that guitar, but I don't want to um, bring it out anymore because I, it's just semi-retired, let's say. Okay. Anyway, so uh, this one is a lovely guitar too, and this is from France. Okay. So these, uh, uh, so the Somer McAfee guitars were, were basically made and. Uh, uh, from 1932 to 1952, and that's what Django played. And so um, he, his guitar was actually number 503, and that was, it's in the, uh, the museum, uh, it's called the, the Musée de la Musique in Paris, and it's a museum where they have all the, the instruments uh, from, from there. And uh, so I want you to kind of hear these guitars and we'll figure it out. Now there's a thing, there's a thing called La Pompe, uh, L-E-P-O-M-P-E, and it's that kind of groove thing that Django was all um, kind of, when you hear that and you get that feel, you kind of um, understand what kind of drew, drew me to it. It's got this nice drive. So, and I'll show you how he did it with, these, with, this, with his fingers. So the first note I'm going to play, I'll play with my second finger. Okay, now I'm going to add one more pitch. And then I'm going to add my third finger, and I'm going to rest it just like he did. Now, here's the groove. You guys want to help me out? Two, three, four. Okay, so that's La Pomp. Okay, so that's when I heard it, and I'm like, I got, I got to have it. And so that's when I've been converted to a Django file. Okay. <laughs> This is the most famous Django composi uh, composition out there. It was recorded in 1937 by the Quintet of the Hot Club France. It was Django on guitar, Stefan Grappelli, his brother Joseph and Eugene Vies on guitar, and Louis Villa on bass. It's called Minor Swing. We'd like to play it for you. Ready? Two, one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. 